Just want to be with you. Oh, I just want to be with you. Oh, I just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. Just wanna be with you. Oh, I just wanna be with you. Oh, I just wanna be with you. I just wanna be with you. Welcome to our day of celebration. Okay, some of you know that this is a very special day. Others, we hope that it will unfold and you'll see more and more meaning in it. But before we stand up and do anything else, I have a question for everyone who's willing to do this. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. But everyone who's willing to do this, turn to your neighbor or to... A stranger, maybe you don't know who you're next to today, that happens in the life of our church, people visiting just on one particular Sunday, but turn to a friend, turn to a stranger, if you're willing, and take just one or two minutes and tell them all the different kinds of churches you've ever gone to, okay? Turn to, turn to a friend and tell them all the different kinds of churches you've ever gone to, Okay? Okay, so as we were talking about different churches, maybe maybe you mentioned different denominations that you've been to. Maybe you mentioned uh, different places that you've been to. Uh, I've had the opportunity to meet in a church that started in a closet. They, there was a facility, and they said, "Well, if you want to if you want to use some of our space here, we have a lar- we have a large storage closet, and if you." People want to get together. You can use our Lord, our large storage closet. Okay, we of course happen to be a church that meets 
here in the school. Uh, Mr. Kovac, uh, over 20 years ago, uh, was given the, uh, uh, given the job if he would please find a place for our church to meet. And as Mr. Kovac shares his testimony about that time, uh, he went to 10 different places. No, 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 no. Finally, this place said, hmm, you would like to have a church that meets here. And so they, they allowed us. And in the 33-year history of our church, for over 20 of those years, we've met right here. Okay? So today, many of you know where I'm going with this. Today, symbolically, is what many people refer to as the birthday of the church. Now, for those of you who know why symbolically today is called the birthday of the church, turn to your friend and tell them why today is known symbolically as the birthday of the church. And if you don't know, say, I don't have a clue. (laughs) How about you? Okay, turn to your neighbor and ask them, okay? Why is today symbolically referred to as the birthday of the church? Now then, statistically speaking, it is estimated. There's no way to prove this, so the best that anyone can say is it's estimated. Statistically speaking, it is estimated that the most popular day of the year for people to get baptized is Easter. Okay? It's impossible to prove that, but statistically speaking... If given a chance, statistically speaking, now statistically speaking, this is impossible to prove this, today is the second most popular day to get baptized. Why would that be? If you know, turn to your neighbor and tell them why it would be today. And if you don't know, say, I don't know, how about you? Okay, turn to your neighbor and see. For everyone who has their own Bible with them, or at least you have it electronically on your phone, if you don't have it electronically on your phone, shame on you, you're going to burn forever, you sinner. Get out of our midst, throw sackcloth and ashes. We can't even allow you in our presence. You have 500 apps, but you don't have the app of the Bible. Ah, we spit on you, we're kick your donkey. Okay, no, okay. So for everyone who has a Bible, or if you don't have a Bible, at least you have the Bible app on your phone, find Leviticus chapter 23. Just briefly, find Leviticus chapter 23. For the Jewish people, on their yearly rhythm, they were instructed, remember to celebrate, remember to feast, And there were regular celebrations and regular feasts. In Leviticus chapter 23, the first feast, the first celebration, is to happen every week. And it's the celebration of, those of you who have your Bible, 
Sabbath. Once a week, they were supposed to pull back and celebrate and have a great time of relaxing, resting, eating, sharing time with family and friends, worshiping God. Then there was the feast of the Passover. That happened around April, normally, according to the Jewish calendar. It was the symbolic time that they were delivered. And then following the day of Passover, they were going to have a feast of, 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 of the first fruits, okay? And as they, as they did that, they would continue to celebrate. And then, guess where we're going with this? Seven weeks, seven times seven is 49, plus one. Fifty days later, they would have a feast of weeks that they would come together and have a big celebration. And we know that day as the day of Pentecost from the Greek New Testament 50. Okay, so even if you don't know all of Jewish history, there was this anticipation And today, we're going to be celebrating the day of Pentecost. There is the Feast of Trumpets. There was the announcement. There was the spiritual year that they celebrated. There was the civil year that they celebrated. In Leviticus chapter 23, there's only one exception. There's one thing that they're supposed to do that's not a feast. There's one day that is supposed to be a day of sincere fasting. They are supposed to, quote, afflict themselves. And that's the Day of Atonement, which happened normally, according to their calendar, somewhere in October. Now, we've talked about this before, but Jesus Christ fulfilled and transformed all the teachings of Scripture. And for us, while it's normal that we have Easter, it's actually a fulfillment and a transformation as Jesus became the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world. And so Easter was traditionally not taking away the sins of the world. The Passover was not, excuse me, not Easter, but the Passover was not original. It was recognizing that God's judgment passed over the Israelites, but the judgment was still coming. Whereas in October, on the day of fasting, the day of weeping, the day of mourning, they would take a scapegoat, And they symbolically would place the sins of the nation on the head of the scapegoat and then send it out into the wilderness. But Jesus, as he came and fulfilled the Passover, he also combined it with the Day of Atonement. And now our whole lives, we've never known that there was anything different because we've grown up in the Christian lifestyle knowing that Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. But then there's also the Feast of Booths or Tabernacles. So, there you go. Welcome to the International Baptist Church of Budapest and our day of celebration. There are some people that on purpose are getting baptized today because of the day of Pentecost and because of all the things that we're going to read about that happened on this day. There are some people who look at it and they say symbolically... The church was given birth symbolically on the day of Pentecost because not only was there God the Father, God the Son, but there was the outpouring of God the Holy Spirit. And then immediately after that, we see that they began worshiping together in their homes, sharing everything in common, and then step by step, the church as we understand it was developed. So welcome to this day of celebration this day of Pentecost at the International Baptist Church of Budapest. And just coincidentally, we are going to have a fellowship luncheon when the whole service is over. So for everybody that can stick around, we can have a little bit of the same fun. You know, when David said in the Psalms, I was glad when they said unto me, let's go to the house of the Lord. It makes so much sense because they were going for times of worship and times for celebration. Today, as we have our worship service, we want to know Christ, we want to grow in Christ, we want to show Christ, and today, as every Sunday, we want to officially begin our worship service by standing and reading together. (laughs) Guess where we're going to read from? Hmm. 
I would guess maybe Acts chapter 2. Bingo, you got it, bingo. (laughs) Acts chapter 2. Let's stand together as Doug leads us in reading this scripture together. Good morning, church. This morning's reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 2, 1 through 13, and it goes like this. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting, and divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at the sound, the multitude came together and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthenons and Medes and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them telling in their own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others mockingly said, They are all filled with new wine. This is the reading of God's word. And all of God's people said, Amen. This day of Pentecost, the Jewish people that were devout had come from all the different nations to Jerusalem to fulfill the tradition of having the feast. As they came, they had a common language that they spoke, but as we read, they had their own heart language. And this day of Pentecost, in the Old Testament, with the Tower of Babel, We see what man's arrogance, and we see what the spirit of man causes. It creates division. God separates them. And in this beautiful picture, this symmetry, on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit comes, instead of causing division, it causes unity. So that all of the people, when they heard in their own heart language, the good news, the mighty works of God from all the different nations that were represented, they rejoiced. Now, some people were checking on them, and we'll come to this later in the service, and they said, huh, we don't know what's gotten into these people. They're just acting, they're just acting like a bunch of drunkards. Now, they're going to be chastised for that. But on this day of Pentecost, symbolically, the birthday of what we now call the church. A day that to this day, some churches and some denominations, if at all possible, they say, oh, you ought to get baptized on Pentecost Sunday. Today, I have no idea how many different countries we have represented. I'm going to guess, I'm going to guess at least 25 today. That's my guess. Through the course of a year, we have people from 40 different countries. I'm going to guess today we might have 25. But regardless of where we've come from, welcome to this day of celebration. Happy birthday to the birth of the church as we know it. And today, be careful. God might sneak up on you. And actually do something that you're not expecting. You might actually go to church and have a good time today. You might actually go to church and have God speak to your heart today. You might actually go to church and it's not just a ritual. But it's a true celebration of the relationship with Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. 
Iago, lead us, please. morning. I brought a, a really happy song for us to start this day of celebration. And if you guys want to clap, uh, be comfortable to clap. And if not, if you want to stay um, without clapping, but singing together, this is also allowed, okay? So let's do it. In my cares, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. You are the peace in my troubled sea. In this silence, you won't let go. In the questions, your truth will your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. You are the peace in my troubled sea. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness. I will follow you, oh, my lighthouse, my lighthouse. I will trust the promise you carry me set to show, set to show, set to show. I won't fear what tomorrow brings. With each morning I rise and see My God's love will lead me through You are the peace in my troubled sea oh, You are the peace in my troubled sea You are my light, my lighthouse My lighthouse shining in the darkness I will follow you, oh, my lighthouse, my lighthouse. I will trust the promise you carry me safe to show. Also, we've got, we've got top leadership here today. If you're a student 
or if you're connected with the faculty, the staff, the, the leadership of the Word of Life program at Tolomash, would you stand for just a moment? If you're, if you're anyhow connected to Word of Life, would you please stand today? Thank you, thank you so much. We have the privilege and the honor of being connected with the Word of Life program, and we so much appreciate what they do, the partnership that's been going on for all these years. Now, a few of you have to be here because you're assigned here. This was your assignment for this semester. You had to come, and you had to help us at the International Baptist Church of Budapest. So if that matches your description... You, you had to be here because you were assigned here. You come on up front, please. Those of you that were assigned, come on up. Yeah, Emmy, come on, come on. Some of you, come on up, okay. You, were, you, you, were, you had to be here, okay. There's only three of you today that, that were officially assigned. Diago? Where's Diago? He's not here today? He's not here. Okay. You can sit down if you don't have to be here, okay? You just, okay, okay, if you don't have to be here, but you just chose to come here. Uh, the Word of Life program, correct me, but the Word of Life program has basically a one-year program. Some of the students come back for two years, and then there are other students like Daniel Castro, like Lynette, like Wesley, they go on and they start serving in leadership roles at Word of Life. Henry, who, came, who comes so faithfully with us. But during the course of the year, different students, if the, the one-year program, the two-year program, they are given certain assignments, practical assignments. Uh, some go and do evangelism on a weekly basis. Uh, that's wonderful if you've ever gone and participated with those that are doing that. Others come and help us, specifically at our church, with our sound system. He's not here today, though. Okay. Uh, but also help us with uh, teaching our children and teaching our teenagers. So, how many of you are actually assigned? Four? I thought there were five of you. No? Only four that were officially assigned? Okay. So, please. And who? And Wesley. Wesley, come on up here. We'll make you come on up here, too. And Wesley. We'll make Wesley be up here, too. Okay. Please tell us, okay, where you are in the program. Are you finishing the one-year, the two-year program? And if you know, please tell us where you're going, if you know, after this semester. Uh, we're doing this because today is the last, last official day that the Word of Life will be with us. Now, through the course of the summer, there will be others that will continue to come on a regular basis, but for those who were assigned to be here with us. We are so grateful. But please tell us just a little bit your name, where you're from, and if you know where you're going. Okay? So. So my name is Wesley. I've been coming here for three years now. I'm from South Carolina originally in the United States. Um, my role was just serving as an intern here at Word of Life. Where I'm going next, I'm not sure but probably studying the Word of God in more depth. So I'm looking at different colleges now, so we'll see. Good morning. <laughs> uh, my name is Emmy. I am from Serbia, and uh, I'm finishing my second year here. And I will return to Serbia and um, do ministry with youth and translation. Hello, my name is Tamara. I'm also from Serbia. Uh, I'm finishing now my first year, and I will go back to Serbia, and there's a lot of work waiting for me in my church, so they're waiting for me to come back. <laughs> um, I'm Susanna. I'm from South Carolina as well in the States. Um, I'm finishing my first year at Word of Life, and I'm not sure where I'm going next. Maybe second year. Still praying about it. <laughs> Yes, Wesley and Susanna are brother and sister. Yes, yes, they are. Yes. And yes, Babish won our Mother's Day contest last weekend because she has eight children. 
but for the record, if if their mom was here, she would win because they are a family of nine children. Okay, so <laughs> it's just very small. It's just very symbolic, but we want to give you guys a box of chocolate and thank you so much for being with us. But more than that, we want to pray for you, but we want to pray for all the Word of Life. So if you're connected with Word of Life, would you please stand one more time because we as a congregation would like to have a prayer of blessing, thanking God for you and praying God's blessing upon you. Father, it is our joy, it's our privilege, it's our honor to have the partnership with the Word of Life students and staff and faculty. Father, they have been a blessing to us in so many ways, and they continue, Father, to study your word, they continue to expand your kingdom. And Father, we pray that day by day and step by step that you would watch over them and please, Father, give them your clear direction. Please give them your clear guidance. And Father, whatever, whatever challenges that they might face, please, Father, carry them through those days as well. It's in your son's name that we pray and ask these things. Amen. Okay, Yago. <laughs> Let's stand up. Just sing one more song.
sets up for us a program for our teenagers 13 to 18. So as our children and as our teenagers, as they make a transition to their program, we want to have a prayer of blessing upon them. Father, because of what Christ has done for us, we can proclaim that it is well with our soul. Father, today... As our children go, as they study, as they discuss, Father, we pray that you would bless them with knowledge, bless them, Father, with understanding, help them, Father, from a very young age to be obedient to you, Father, and to continue to follow you, Father, each day of their lives. And Father, for their parents, for their leaders, for their teachers today. We also pray, Father, that you would bless these adults that are helping, that they are helping bring up our children, Father, in the teaching and in the instruction of the Lord. It's in your son's name that we pray. Amen. You may be seated. We are going to, whoa, whoa, can you hear me now? (laughs) We are going to return to Acts chapter 2, but for each person that has your own copy of scripture, please find Acts chapter 1. Now, you already know the answers to these questions, but let's bring it together. Approximately... 50 days ago, what did we celebrate? Easter. Okay? Now, the Jewish people didn't celebrate Easter. They celebrated what? Passover. Passover for the Jewish people was approximately 50 days ago. And then following Passover, they would count seven weeks plus one day, 49 plus 1, the number 50, and in the Greek New Testament, the day of Pentecost is 50 days later. Now in Acts chapter 1, the first few verses, verses 1 through 5, they, they summarize very briefly that after his resurrection, if you have your own copy of scripture, we don't have this on the screen, you've got to work for it, okay, you've got to open up your own app or look at your own copy of scripture, okay. In Acts chapter 1, during the resurrection of Christ, okay, Easter, the Bible says for 40 days he spent time with the disciples. And as he spent time with the disciples, he gave them a final instruction Now, you stay here in Jerusalem, and you wait until you receive the promise that I've given to you, the promise that's going to come from the Father, the promise of the Holy Spirit. He didn't tell them exactly how long they were going to wait, but he told them to stay there and wait until they received it. And then we go into the ascension of Christ, 
that he then went back to heaven. They stayed there. They were talking among themselves that Jesus had chosen 12 of them to be his special followers. Sadly, Judas had betrayed Christ and had committed suicide. And so they discussed among themselves and they said, we need to find a replacement so that we have 12 of us together. But again, by reading carefully, there were more than just 12 followers of Christ. There were over 100, perhaps even more. But we see these practical things taking place. And then as Doug led us in reading, as we went into chapter 2, he's with them for about 40 days. He then leaves, and then a short time later, all the Jewish people, all the devout Jews, are coming to Jerusalem to celebrate the day of Pentecost. And they're coming from all the different countries that they're living in. And they're coming together for this special time of celebration. And on that day is when the Holy Spirit descends. This is what Doug told us about. I can only imagine what that day would have been like to have been in the crowd and to say, wait a minute, wait a minute. I hear them speaking. I see the sign, I see, it's like a flame of fire. I see it, but I hear it. I hear it in my own heart language. My language that I grew up with. And then people started criticizing, as we already said, and said, ah, we don't know what's happening. These guys must be drunk. And Peter stands up, and he preaches a sermon, beginning with verse 14. And he says, these men aren't drunk. It's only 9 o'clock in the morning. But then he goes through fulfilling the Old Testament prophecies that in the last days, referring to the the prophet Joel, that God's Spirit is going to come upon the sons and the daughters. The young men will have visions. The old men will dream dreams. And then he goes on and he talks about the day of the Lord coming. And he shares with them that even though David was one of their greatest leaders, that David himself pointed to Jesus Christ in a prophetic way. And he says, these things that we've been wanting, these things that we've been looking for, they have now happened. And so today we're going to continue to look in Acts chapter 2 in just a moment, beginning with verse 36. What happened following that sermon of Peter? Now, this is part... uh, For three weeks, we've been talking about what it means to be Baptist. And today will be the final sermon that we talk about today in this three-part series. And we're coming to this passage. But just as a reminder, there are so many different Baptist churches. There are so many different Baptist denominations. Okay, It's impossible to say all Baptists believe exactly these things. But we're trying to find some things that most Baptists, the majority of Baptists, the majority of Baptists believe in the local autonomy of the local church. That this church, for instance, the International Baptist Church of Budapest, no one outside of us can tell us what we have to preach. No one can tell us what we have to sing. No one can tell us what the what the sermon must be today, there is no outside authority that has any of that power upon us. The, the local church, if you had an organizational chart, is at the very top. Now we choose to partner with other like-minded Baptist churches. And as we choose to partner with them, different associations of Baptist churches grow. For instance, here in Hungary, There is the Hungarian Baptist Union. And we, by our own choice, are part of the Hungarian Baptist Union. If we started doing something that was incredibly controversial, they would then have the ability to say, we can't tell you what to do, but you're no longer going to be part of our association. You've gone outside what we agree to. We are also part not only of the Hungarian Baptist Union, we're part of the International Baptist Convention. 
Again, they're not telling us Sunday by Sunday what we have to do, what we have to preach, what we have to sing. We're completely free to choose all those things ourselves. And another thing that's so important historically for Baptist, another thing that's so important for Baptist historically as they come together is to freely give of their own money and take a portion of that money to share with mission organizations so that the outreach of the church could extend far beyond themselves. These are common things. They're not dictated, but they're common things. The second thing is that the authority for our church is the Bible. We try as best as we can to follow the teachings of the Bible. The thing that's a little bit strange is the word ordinance. We follow two ordinances. There are two commands. There were the commandments of the Old Testament, the Ten Commandments. Those still apply to you and I today. But then Jesus one time when he was questioned, what's the greatest commandment? We know this. Jesus said to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And the second is like it, to love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said all of the law and the teaching of the prophets can be summarized in these two teachings, these two commandments. But then he also gave other commandments. He said as often as you come together, and last week we celebrated the Lord's Supper, that that supper that he took from being one thing, fulfilled it, transformed it into another thing that we call the Lord's Supper, that was a command on a regular basis. Again, every Baptist church is going to be different. It just so happens that this particular church, for us, we celebrate the Lord's Supper, the commandment to celebrate the Lord's Supper, the ordinance of the Lord's Supper. We celebrate it the second Sunday of every month. That's our rhythm. You've been at other churches that have different rhythms. The other commandment, Jesus said, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. So that's the other ordinance, is the ordinance of baptism. Now the next slide is baptizo. Okay. Because of their own reasons, different denominations and different translators of the Bible, they came to this one particular word, baptizo, And instead of translating it, they transliterated it. And if you transliterate a word, you can then put any definition that you want into that word. Okay, let me let me try to do something that will be offensive. Okay. Heads up. Oh. We were supposed to have fun today. Now he's going to offend us? Yeah. I will, okay. Okay. Those of you who know me, you know that I like to run. Those of you who know me know that I run very, very slowly. My only saving grace is that he's old and slow, okay? But here's the thing. If I said to you, I believe in running, by running, even if it's slow, you would say, oh, that makes sense. But if I came to you and said, well, no, actually, I believe in running by walking, Running by walking? Yes, I believe in running by walking. Ed, that's a completely different word, you know. Running is running, walking is walking. I know, but for me personally, the most important thing of all is exercise. So I don't believe in running by running, I believe in running by walking. Okay. Now, somebody else could come along and say... Oh, I've got my little grandchild. And the little grandchild says, I believe in running by skipping. I can't even imitate that, okay? And you say, well, okay, that's okay that you believe in running by skipping. But you know the word skipping means skipping. Skipping is skipping. So running is running, skipping is skipping, walking is walking. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it doesn't really matter what it means because I just just take the word running, but I believe in running by skipping. Have I offended anybody yet? 
Because what has happened is that we've taken things outside of the Bible, we've brought in different traditions, different teachings, so that we take the word baptism, which means immersion, but then we add different words to it. So Baptists believe, this is not a typo, in immersion by immersion. So that's, that's not the way I was taught. That's not the way I believe in. I believe in immersion by a different form. Not disagreeing, but the purpose of the past three weeks has not been to, to try to tear down something else, but to try to explain. Baptist, why, why do they go back to this teaching? Because they're trying to follow the teaching of Scripture. Baptism in the Bible, our next one, was observed by Jesus himself. We read this last week in Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. He came to John the the Baptist. He was baptized himself. It was commanded by Jesus in Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 through 20. It was proclaimed and practiced by the very, very first Christians. Last week, we looked at Acts chapter 16, verses 30 through 34, the Philippian jailer. Paul and Silas were in prison. Miraculously, they were rescued. In that whole story, as they were rescued, the Philippian jailer came to them and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, period. That's what you have to do to be saved. But time and time again, in the very, very first written records, baptism and salvation go hand in hand. Confused yet? You have to have salvation. You have to repent, accept Christ as your Savior. And then there is baptism. As an outward testimony, as a public demonstration of what's already happened inwardly. If it doesn't happen, then you are a dry sinner before you go under the water, and when you come out, you are simply a wet sinner. The water doesn't save you. The water doesn't take away your sin. The only thing that takes away our sin is the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The only way of salvation is it's a gift of grace, not of works. It's simply receiving that. So last week we looked at Acts chapter 16. Today, on Pentecost Sunday, we're going to continue. After Peter's sermon at Pentecost, we're going to continue in Acts chapter 2 with verse 36. When they ask him, what must we do? They've now had God's word preached to their hearts. They've now seen something. They've now felt something. They've now heard something. And now they're wondering. And so Peter, as a Jew, talking to his own Jewish brethren, goes on and tells them, Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You've been here the past two Sundays There is only one word in that whole passage that's not translated, it's transliterated. If the whole text was translated, it would read, And Peter said to them, Repent and be immersed, every one of you. But instead of translating that single word, and there were various reasons, why people decided not to translate it. They transliterated it and then started adding different teachings 
that we don't find clearly in Scripture. In Acts chapter 2, verse 38, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time, but for those that are interested in the Greek text, if you go far top, top word, far right as you're looking at the screen, be baptized. For some reason, instead of translating that one word, they transliterated it. To be baptized, according to the Bible, is to be immersed, is to be under the water. Now, the other thing that people read in that verse is the simple preposition ice, E-I-S. And in some translations, it says, for the forgiveness of your sins. In the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. This is not a Greek lesson, but various Greek scholars, I mentioned last week, two weeks ago, a man named Herschel Hobbes. There's another very famous Greek scholar named A.T. Robertson. That word for can be translated because of, on the basis of, as the result of. And so when you put all of the scriptures together in the New Testament, here is the consistent message. Repent of your sins. Accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. And as a result of that, your public testimony is to be immersed in His name. That is the more consistent translation across all the different passages. And again, going back to last week, Acts chapter 16, verse 31, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. Going on to verse 39. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. We talked about the day of Pentecost is this beautiful symmetry. The Tower of Babel caused division. Man's spirit, man's arrogance caused God's judgment so that the people were divided and spread by different languages around the world. In the day of Pentecost, people from different countries, different languages, they came together and the Spirit of God fell upon them. And as it fell upon them, they heard in their own language And so whereas the spirit of man will cause diversity and disunity, excuse me, diversity is not a bad word, will cause disunity, the spirit of God, when it truly falls upon somebody, brings harmony and unity, regardless of country, regardless of language, regardless of culture. The true hearing, it's a fulfillment of Genesis chapter 12. Peter at this moment is speaking to Jews, but remembering Genesis chapter 12 that God said, I'm going to make a special covenant with you, Abraham, you and your wife, Sarah, even though you're old, even though you're past the age of giving birth to children, I'm going to make a great nation come from you in Genesis chapter 12. And as that great nation comes from you, it's going to be the privilege of that great nation to receive blessings, but then all the nations of the earth are to be blessed through you. And so the Jewish people themselves received God's blessing, but they were then to go and to spread that blessing to others. And Jesus, again, before he left, said, you're going to be my witnesses starting here in Jerusalem. You're going to go to the country of Judea. You're going to deal with people that are a little bit different from you. The Samaritans. You're going to go to the outermost parts of the world. And now here's Peter standing up saying, it's happened. It's happening. The message of God is coming. I'm speaking. But it's not only for you. It's for you. It's for your children. It's for all, even those who are far off. Far off. That's not just physical, that's spiritual. You can live in the same home with somebody and be so far off. You can share the bedroom with your brother or with your sister 
and you can still be so far off. You can live in the same building with another family member and yet by design refuse to take the same elevator, refuse to take the same stairwell, refuse to enter and exit at the same time. We can be physically in the presence of the Holy Spirit. And spiritually, we can still be so far off. But the good news is that God calls people to himself in verse 40. And with many other words, he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word those who accepted the good news of Christ, those who were born again, naturally as that happened, they were then baptized. They were immersed. And there were added that day about 3,000 souls. This is what some biblical scholars refer to as the birthday of the church as we know it. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit coming into the lives of people, fulfilling all the teachings of the Old Testament, but then transforming them and taking them into a new direction. So biblical baptism, when we look at all of the New Testament, not merely one particular verse, but when we look at all of the New Testament together, biblical baptism is a personal testimony of faith. When a person comes to the point in their life of saying, I know that I have accepted Christ as my Savior. I personally know that I have done that. It's also a personal act of obedience. Jesus said to become his disciple. Jesus said to follow all of his teachings. Jesus said that after repenting, I should be baptized and therefore, I'm following that act of baptism. And it is practiced by immersion. Next slide. Biblical baptism is symbolic, but it's not salvific. And through the course of the years, through the course of church history, some people began to have very well-intended, logical ideas. And they said, well, okay, here's... Here's this, this poor person is sick. They're lying on their deathbed. There's no way that they can go and be immersed in water. So we're just going to come and bring a pitcher of water and we're going to pour it over top of him. That symbol is beautiful and powerful, but it slips in an error in thinking. Because instead of that becoming a testimony of that person repenting and walking, it becomes a symbolism, not of that, but of somehow his sins getting washed away. And water can't wash away your sins. It can't. There was another practice, and it just became logical. Well, I mean, if you can, if you can pour water, it would be much more effective. Let's just get a, a small container of holy water. And let's, let's travel, just take our carry-sized container of holy water, and we'll just anoint people. Okay. That's also a powerful symbol. In the Old Testament, they would take the blood of the sacrifice, and they would sprinkle it around the altar. With Aaron's sons, they would take the blood of the sacrifice and put some on their ear, some on their toe. It, it, was a, a, it was a marking. It was an anointing. We are signifying this is holy. These people have been set apart. These are great symbols. But they're not the symbol of being buried, dying to my old way of life, being raised from the dead as Christ himself was raised from the dead, and then walking in obedience with Jesus as my Lord and Savior. So these are symbolic, but they're not salvific. Now here's, have I offended anybody yet? 
Oh, boy, write this one down because this one is so slippery and it's so dangerous. And people say it on a regular basis. And the next time you say it in my presence, you're going to be embarrassed. Well, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. Think about it. Do you know why that is such a dangerous lie? And theological incorrect thing to say. It's correct to say, I was a sinner who became saved by grace. But when I was born again, I was either born again or I wasn't. When I became a new creature, I either became a new creature in Christ or I didn't. Whatever traditions, whatever rituals I went through, my heart was either transformed or it wasn't. And so if I continue to say as an excuse, well, after all, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. Oh, folks, that is so dangerous because it becomes the justification to be a saint who consciously sins. And that's my problem. I was a sinner who got saved by grace. But what I currently am, according to Scripture, if I've been born again, I'm a saint. And tragically, I'm a hypocrite because I sin. Well, I was just trying to be humble. Well, there, that's, humility is good. It's good to humble ourselves before the Lord. It's good to recognize when we've fallen short. It's good to turn back to God. But you're either a sinner who happens to do good things. We are surrounded by sinners who do good things. We are surrounded by sinners who show up for work every day. We are surrounded by sinners who, when they prepare our taxes, they do it honestly. We are surrounded by sinners who work from morning till midnight. We are surrounded by sinners who do good things. So it's, it's not impossible that a sinner can do... We, are, we wouldn't live if we weren't surrounded by sinners who did good things. But child of God, you're either a sinner... Or you've been born again. And if you're born again, you are now, according to Scripture, a saint. And here's the tragedy. Saints continue to sin. And there's no excuse for that. And when the Jewish people heard Peter proclaiming the good news of how Jesus had fulfilled all the prophecies. It cut them to the heart. They had been following all the teachings of the Old Testament. They were devout. They wouldn't have even been there for the day of Pentecost if they weren't devout. But they were so devout that they continued to follow the tradition to show up where they were supposed to be when they were supposed to be there. And as they were there, as Peter proclaimed the word of God to them clearly, they then saw that Jesus was the Messiah that they needed to follow. They were cut to their hearts. And as they were cut to their hearts, they said, Wow, what now do we have to do to be saved? And Peter said, Repent and be baptized. The baptism doesn't save you. It testifies that you've repented, that you've accepted Christ, and that you're now willing to go forward with him. Throughout scripture and throughout our lives, the last slide, there is a difference between what you need to do and what you want to do. God spoke clearly to Jonah. He said, Jonah, you need to go to Nineveh and you need to preach the good news there. And Jonah said, no way. Those are terrible people. So he needed to do one thing, but he didn't want to do that, and so he didn't. There was Isaiah. He was living in a hard, hard time in the history. 
And he heard the voice of the Lord saying, Who can we send? And who will go for us? And he said, Here I am. Here I am. There's a task that needs to be done. And I want to do it. The, the difference in my life is that often what I need to do is not what I want to do. And so today, what was true in the Bible is still true in my life. There's this remarkable thing, and we all possess it. We can all look at somebody else, and we can accurately say, that's what he needs to do. That's what she needs to do. It's remarkable how we're able to do that. We listen to a situation, and we say, well, i tell you what you need to do. And I, I'm not trying to be harsh, but I, I, we all possess that ability. And on the flip side, most of the time, when we receive feedback, that's different than affirmation. We all need affirmation. And it's great to get affirmation. We all need that. But often when we get feedback from somebody that says, well, I'll tell you what you need to do. There's the internal reaction. How dare you tell me? Who do you think you are? I know what I'm doing. I don't need to do that. Man, you're off base. My mama says she loves me and that I'm good looking. So who are you to tell me that I'm old and ugly? See, I mean, it's... So the feedback that we give is universally accurate. Excuse me. Yeah, the feedback that we give. But the feedback that we receive sometimes bothers us. And so here's the question today. As you hear the message of God today, it was a prodigal son. He came to his senses. He was far off from the father. And he came to his senses and he came back home. And when he came back home, they had a feast and a celebration. And his older brother was out working in the fields. And when the older brother came, you know the story, Luke chapter 15. He asked one of the servants, what's going on? The servant said, oh, your, your brother that was, that was gone, he's now back. And your father's throwing him a feast. Come on in. Father comes out. I'm not going to come in. I'm not going to associate with that guy. He goes and he, he, he's a sinner. He, he, he just does everything. I, I work for you constantly, and you give me nothing. I can be in my Father's presence physically, and spiritually I can still be so far off. So the question today for each of our hearts is a simple question. As we expose ourselves to God's word, what do you need to do today? And does it match up with what you want to do? I, I, I knew a man, and from the depths of his heart, he used to say, God, please make me willing to be willing. A great prayer. Sometimes I'm not even willing to be willing. God, the Holy Spirit has come. Jesus has paid the price. The love of God has been extended to me. And so as I'm exposed to God's word, what does God tell me that I need to do? And then what am I willing to do? Together. Let's stand up one more time.
stories of all they think you like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleasing that I never You're a good, good father It's who you are It's who you are It's who you are And I'm loved by you It's who I am It's who I am It's who I am Oh, I see Searching for answers Far am I But I know We are searching for answers Only you provide Cause you know Just what we need before We see our world You're good Perfect in all of your ways, cause you're perfect in all of your ways, cause you're perfect in all of your ways. Tonight. You are perfect in all of your ways, you are perfect in all of your ways. Perfect in all of your ways, Jesus. Oh, it's undeniable. I can hardly speak, be so unexplainable. I, I can hardly. Think as you call me, deeper still as you call me, deeper still as you call me, deeper still into love. Oh, oh, you good, good Father, it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are. It's who I am, it's who I am, you're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. You are perfect in the Let's sing one more time, Ricky. You're a good, 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your love. Thank, thank you for everything you've done now in our lives. And may your Holy Spirit work in us so that we can be changed by you, Lord. And your work be done in our lives. And uh, may everything that's not from you, Lord, may go and what is eternal can dwell in us we need that Lord we need you Amen thank you and Jesus met her at the well and he talked to her about her life, and he said, Now go back to your village. She went back. And there was a woman that was caught in the very act of adultery. Jesus said to the whole crowd, Whoever's without sin, throw the first stone. Not a single person threw a stone. But Jesus said to that woman, Go. And sin no more. There was a time that God told me deep, deep, deep in my heart, you need to go and talk to a man. He was a man who had insulted me, had offended me. I was so angry. I didn't want to go, but I knew in my heart of hearts I needed to. When I showed up at his front door, he was surprised, and he said, Ed, well, what are you doing here? I said, I don't really know. <laughs> but he and I talked. He didn't change by the record. He was me. It's easy to talk about forgiveness theoretically. It's hard to practice it really. It's easy to see when somebody else needs to go and sin no more. It's, it's more humbling to admit I myself need to repent of my sins and stop doing it. What I need to do and what I want to do, sadly, are often different situations. But as God speaks to your heart today, as he shares with you what you need to do, please, be willing to become willing. You may be seated. In the life of our church, there are people that are concerned about refugees and there's mechanisms to help. There are people that know about the homeless church and they donate clothing. Bela and Augie make sure that it gets taken. I mentioned it earlier in the service. It's our privilege as a congregation to receive money that helps take care of all of our needs, but we take 10% of that money and freely. Nobody forces us to do this by our own volition. We freely give away money to different mission agencies, different organizations, different ministries. And so today as we continue to have our worship, as we continue to have our offering, uh, our elder David will come and lead us in an offertory prayer. Oh Lord, we thank you for the blessings you've given us, Lord, for all that you've provided us, Lord. And we just thank you that we're able to give a little bit back to you, Lord. And just pray that Whatever, you, whatever we give, you will multiply for your purpose, Lord. And Lord, whatever we hold back, you will also use for your purpose, Lord. Lord, we thank you for all your blessings on us. Amen.
if you are worshiping with us today, even if it's only just for one Sunday, we appreciate you being with us. If you're willing to help us to stay in touch with you electronically, there are different cards. If you would fill out one of these cards uh, we and give us permission to put you on our church mailing list, it's our number one way to stay in touch with people. Is there anybody, it's a twofold question. Are you worshiping with us for the first time? And number two, are you willing to stand up and introduce yourselves? So there, it's twofold, okay? So it's a twofold question. Is there anybody worshiping with us for the first time in this section who's also willing to stand up and introduce yourselves? Would you please do that? Yeah, I see in the back. Oh. David? Yes. Yeah, my name is Anne Marie, and I'm visiting you from London. Anna Marie, yeah. yes. thanks for being with us today. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. We have down here, Dovey. Dovey in the front, we have. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Ricardo, my wife, Bernice. We are Brazilians living in the United States. Oh! Oh! Did you know that this is the International Baptist Brazilian Church of Budapest? Did you know that, Ricardo, before you came? Now you know. Now you know. <laughs> yes, Michael. <laughs> Michael Melvin, my wife Cindy Erler, we're visiting from Seattle, Washington, United States, and we were good, very good friends for years and years with someone who used to worship here, Ed Sanborn. Yes. One of our best friends from years ago. So yes. we missed him because of a previous trip because of COVID, but we're glad to be here worshiping with you, Ed. Yes. Good to else. see you in person, Michael and Cindy. Yes. Yeah, Michael and Cindy, they had plans to come here and see Ed, but COVID happened. And so their river cruise got canceled and all that. But Michael and I have communicated on Zoom, FaceTime, things like that, but it's great to see Michael and Cindy with us today in person. So thanks for, thanks for being with us. Yes. Um, hi, I'm Pelisa. I'm South African living in Hungary. I'm here with my son, Kai, and uh, we were invited by our friend, Pumi. Oh, you know Pumi. <laughs> ah, so good. So good. Uh, the South Africans are making a race. You know, they're making a race out of it. Brazilians, you're ahead. We we acknowledge that. We acknowledge. That. We acknowledge. We acknowledge. But our South African contingency is growing, growing. Anyone on this side that you're worshiping with us for the first time and you're willing to stand up and introduce yourself? Uh, good morning. I'm Lo. I'm coming from Cameroon, but I'm living in Budapest since September. So I've been invited by my friends, my neighbors, and some colleagues. Thank you. Thank you from Cameroon. Thank you, thank you. Way in the front, Dovey. Way in the front, way in the front. Anyone else? we got way in the front here. Yes, thank you. Hi, everyone. Dolian. Um, I'm from Paris, visiting San Marino. Oh, thank you for being with us <laughs> today. You. Santine probably wins the prize every month. Santine comes from Mishkoltz. Is Seged farther than Mishkoltz? Could be a horse race today. Okay, could be a horse race today. Who comes the furthest today? But it's good to have Rachel and, and Norby back with us today again also. In the life of our church, uh, you please help us. We are building an, an electronic contact list. If you're willing to be one of our friends and share your information, if you want to be part of the family of, of IBCB, if, you'd off, if you want to be a member of IBCB, it's still the same contact list and membership. Uh, there's a code, please. We want to have as comprehensive of a list as we can to be able to stay in touch with one another. Our next one, uh, every Tuesday night, our elder Cyprian leads us in a time of Bible study and prayer. Next slide. Uh, is Preeti here today? I didn't see Preeti. No? No, not here? Okay, our lady, any one of our ladies want to make this announcement instead of me? That was weird. Okay, okay, well, I'll do it. Okay. You got a man making the women's meeting announcement? Yeah, it's strange, I know. Okay. Uh, the ladies are going to meet 
on this coming Saturday. Uh, Preeti organizes that each month. Uh, at 9.30 at the Montage Art Cafe, there's going to be a devotional worship Bible quiz. Uh, what to bring? What do you bring? Okay. Sure, thank you. So... If you want to bring some breakfast-type items, bring it, but please come and, and be with the ladies this coming Saturday. Also this coming Saturday, there's going to be a one-day seminar. Many of you participated in this last year. It's something called God Space. There's going to be a one-day seminar. It's also going to be at the KMK building. If you would like to participate in this one-day this one day seminar about sharing your faith with others, there's a QR code. Uh, code that you can click on that and get more information, but that's also help happening this coming Saturday. Next, Esther, somebody, one of the young adults, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> okay. Okay, so meet Esther, any of the young adults. If you consider yourself to be a young adult, I like that. Diff- yes? 18 plus. Okay, if you consider yourself 18 plus. <laughs> we're creeping into a definition of what young adult is. We're, we're creeping there. We're creeping there. Okay, our next one. Uh, last Sunday, uh, we had the, the news, and so here is the updated information, okay? On June the 9th, we're going to have a baptismal service at Centendre. On June the 9th, we will not be here. They're going to have a local election. This is going to be a polling place, and so if you come here on June the 9th because you want to vote, good If you come here on June the 9th because you want to go to the worship service, tough luck. We're not going to be here, okay? Not going to be here on June the 9th. Instead, we will go out to Centendre around 12 o'clock. We'll have a a picnic, bring bring what you want to eat, or there's, see, I can't say it correctly, but it's one of my favorite, my favorite Hungarian word is paradichom, paradichom. That's my favorite Hungarian word. But my second my second favorite, it's the fruit of paradise instead of tomato. I mean, it just sounds so much better in Hungarian. You know, in English, a tomato is a tomato. But in, in Hungarian, the fruit of paradise. Oh, it's a paradichum. It's a good word. Okay, my second favorite word is kachko. I can't say kachko yet, but it's, I'm getting kachko, kachko. I can't say the ku, ku. Say it correctly, David. There we go. Say it ba- correctly, Bela. Yes, yes, yes. In in English, when you skip stones, we just call them skipping stones, okay? But in Hungarian, that little stone is called the duck stone because it makes a little, like a little duck, like a little duck's foot across the... So there's a little bistro called... Kachku. You take great comfort because you're not as bad as me. I know, I know. Okay. So you can bring your own lunch or you can get some food at the little bistro. At 1230, we'll have a, we'll have a short worship time together. And at 1 o'clock, we'll do our baptism. We're going to do it all there. So we're not going to multiple places. On June the 9th, we'll continue to have this announced. And so that's, that's what's going on with our, with our new change with our schedule. And then, today is the Fellowship Luncheon. Yay! Please stick around with us, even if you can't stay for the full thing. And also, today, it's the month of May, and we have our happy birthday. So, if you had a birthday in the month of May or an anniversary in the month of May, please come on up. How many, how many, birthday, how many birthday kids do we have today? Who was born in the month of May? Who was born? 
Virag, Jason, others. Who else was born in the month of May? Come on up, come on up. Only three? I tell you, it's only three born in the month. My twin daughters were born in the month of May, so I'm kind of partial to May. Okay, I'm kind of partial to the month of May. Okay. 21st is their birthday. Anybody else have a May birthday? Oh, anniversary. Ah. Ah. Yeah. Kind of partial to May weddings also. Yeah, I got married in May. Yeah, I got married. So I like I kind of partial to Anybody else got married in May? It's your birthday. You didn't get married yet. Did you? No. Okay. Okay. So we're slipping. We got another birthday girl slipping in here. Okay. Okay, so you know the drill. Tell people your name, your birthday. If you want to tell people how old you are, you can, but it's not mandatory. Okay, when you get to the wedding, make sure you get it right, how many years you've been married. Just a little heads up in front of the whole crowd. Don't want to stumble on that one. Trust me. Okay, so. Hello, my name is Jason. I was born May 7th, and I just turned 25. (laughs) <laughs> Hello, uh, my name is Virag and my birthday is on the 1st of May and uh, I turned 32 this year. Yay, Hello, my name is Mateus. I'm turning 32 today, 19th May. Today. Pentecostal baby. <laughs> Hi, my name's Corey. This is my wife, Christy. And our anniversary is on Tuesday, the 21st. And this will be our second anniversary. Hi, my name is Julia. My birthday was on May 8th, and I turned 14. Hi, my name is Bonilla. My birthday is on 13 May. I'm going to be 50. Oh. <laughs> Anniversary? Yeah. Oh. Hi, Camel and Mariana. Uh, our anniversary is May 11th. We are 20 years more than those guys. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, twi- twi- 22 is what that is. 22, okay. <laughs> just mention them. Yeah, okay. Right. Don't draw attention. Yeah, just mention them. We want to have, it's fun to have fun. Please, we want to have a prayer of blessing upon our birthdays and upon our anniversaries. Let's pray. Father, it is such joy to be able to celebrate the birthdays of our friends, our brothers and sisters, the wedding anniversaries of their families. Father, throughout this month and throughout this upcoming year, may they continue to feel your joy. May they continue to feel your encouragement. May they continue to feel your leadership, Father. It's in your son's name that we pray. Amen. Christian, that's it, right, for the announcements? All right. If there's any way that you can stay with us, please stay with us. If God has uh, spoken to your heart today and you'd like to pray with someone at the end of each of our services, there's two people today. It will be Godwin and Christy, correct? Godwin and Christy, would you mind slipping over here? If you would like to pray with someone today about anything, As God spoke into your heart, Godwin and Christy would be more than willing. They would love to to share with you, to pray with you today. And so please, uh, just discreetly, you can slip over and talk with them. As we go to our fellowship luncheon, our elder Cyprian will lead us in our benediction. Cyprian, would you please come and let's stand as Cyprian leads us. I think we have, uh, it's Pentecost to have the Holy Spirit. Amen means I accept this. I accept this. So I'll, it's the word for God, I'll read it, and then I need you to accept it. 
it will affect your life. Genesis 12 says this, verse 2. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. Your amen is not convincing me. <laughs> amen. amen. God will bless you. Amen. I will make your name great. Amen. amen. And you will be a blessing. Amen. amen. I will bless those who bless you. Amen. And whoever curses you, I will curse him. And all the people on the earth will be blessed through you. Amen. Amen. Have a great week. Go win battles. Go be victorious in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.